Hi, my name is Evgeny. I'm an ordinary software developer, and by accident, I'm a system architect of an ordinary e-commerce system. This talk is based on a living example of platzcart.com software as a service. If you feel somewhat bored during the reaction, during this report, take a look at the demo. It's available on the internet, and also this report is available on the internet in PDF version. People have, people have forgot that a database is a, I itself is an application server. Moreover, it was intended to satisfy an end user. And years of development were not spent in vain. You might have not noticed yet the database developers had succeeded in the task. Now, a database has a real power to compute, not to be a trivial trash can for tweets. So I insist that database is enough for building a web application. For example, PostgreSQL is far beyond average expectations. This talk assumes we are using the following software, PostgreSQL, PHP, FPM, and Nginx. The question why is almost outside of the scope, simply because of the software perfectly meets my requirements and there are too few alternatives. Yet, I am ready to provide you the detailed answer later. A database has a real power to compute, and then my idea is to delegate as much work as possible to a database. It allows me to reduce selects overhead use native user permission system, which is particularly good in PostgreSQL, and minimize execution time of slow, usually slow PHP scripts. And finally, avoid the intermediate data representation, where the last bullet is particularly important. Look, to operate in any way with any data you inevitably shoot a representation of this data. So if you want a PHP script, for example, to do something, then your task inseparably consists of the two parts. Uh, to code an algorithm itself and to code a data representation. So it is possible to save half of a programming labor simply by delegating the data processing to a database. Keeping in mind that a database is a special tool for exactly data processing. Nowadays, the vast majority of scripts running on millions of web servers all over the Internet performs various database tasks. Duplicate, duplicate database labor actually. And most of these tasks are scripted terribly bad. It is seen to misuse tools, and it is seen to misuse power, uh, to, and it is seen to waste power. In other words, I want to put methods and data closer to each other in all senses. Also, also, this idea allows me to arrange an efficient access control. I have defined two database users, a user, re user functioner is granted to perform almost any action, and he is a definer of every function. And the user reader is granted with select permissions and execute permissions only where functions describe all possible data modifications. And since each function has, an, uh, has a special attribute security definer, the reader is actually able to perform data updates, but he is restricted with predefined function set. By this moment, I feel my speech needs a sort of apology. This method does sound too simple to be explicitly mentioned. 
but surprisingly, it is not a mainstream method to arrange a security measures. This is why I paid attention to it. And by this method, I respect the database creator's original ideas of database usage. But there is also a difference between the elder's intentions and my application. The database user is no longer an end user. It is a set of PHP scripts instead of a human. Naturally, so we keep, uh, so we keep system users, like mentioned above, reader and functioner, separately from application end users. Yet the both user permission systems are implemented inside a database. Naturally, the reader credentials are hard-coded in PHP script, in every script. And reader is granted to take actions on behalf of every application user. But functions, each function, require uh, exactly the end user credentials and these credentials are not known to a script. So it keeps uh, system user reader almost disabled and this, user, and this user is not a halfway useful to damage a byte in a system. On the other hand, the user functioner is granted to perform almost any action and he is as dangerous as a root user. But no one knows his password. It is even possible to revoke connection, connect permission from him. The only reader that could connect to a data, the only user that could connect to a database is a reader. No one knows the function of password. Also, uh, this security scheme affects a potential SQL injection threat. Assume we have an SQL injection hole and someone managed to inject the SQL. This SQL will be executed. It will be executed with reader permissions and consequently it will do nothing. Because of any harm of an SQL injection, all in all, is a harm done by a system user. Simply do not overgrant a user and you have nothing to be afraid of. From this point of view, the classical guru recipe to filter entire user input seems slightly wrong. F input filtering looks uh, much like a patch in a leaking pipe. It is too spread to be under your full control, which makes it incapable of being a good security measure. Though input filtering is not bad itself, it's useful indeed, but you should never rely on it as on a security measure, since the database is the best tool to arrange access control. Here is the big picture of Platzcard.com software as a service internal structure. All in all, Platzcard.com still uses PHP, but barely. It only defines the appearance of web pages. In terms of MVC, the whole set of PHP scripts is a set of views. While the entire, um, entire business logic is coded inside a database, as a set of stored procedures. In terms of MVC, they are controllers. And the data model of a Platzcard.com is a data model, no more and no less from every point of view. And it is the leitmotif of this talk. Well, back to PHP. The simplicity of these scripts uh, makes the unnecessity more evident. So I, th I think about even more unusual system design than this. I want to get rid of PHP burden completely to simplify the system further. Keeping in mind 
that PHP is not a web-friendly language. Why I consider PHP is not web-friendly? It is, it is used only to uh, envelop data into HTML text. It is not half difficult, but surprisingly prolix routine. There is an example of the typical, typical web application routine. It is all about the fetch call shown in red. And why? What does this fetch call stand for? Is it really needed to a programmer? Isn't it obvious that a programmer, me for example, shall always fetch data from a result object? A result object is not a result a programmer is working for anyway. And a always call is a meaningless call. It could be omitted, and since it could be omitted, it should be omitted. While a transformation of a result object into something useful, and this useful is always a text, <laughs> is pretty algorithmic, as it clearly seen, <laughs> and uh, it is very typical, but each PHP programmer forced to code exactly this routine time and again. Each time a PHP programmer decides to fetch something, he is forced to code this routine. And since this routine is the most common routine of a, of a web application, I can see that PHP is not web friendly. While it is not impossible to simply return a preformatted text as a result of a query, take a look at the example of my dream. It's merely a single call, almost the same length in bytes, but just a single call. Uh, you may ask, what is a difference between these two? I reply the difference is the abstraction level. In PHP, you have to repeat amounts of low-level fetch calls and to move uh, values from one temporary storage into another temporary storage without a profit. Mm. The difference is the abstraction level. I do not want to care about low-level result representation. I simply want to get the data as a text. And it is possible to achieve with PLPG SQL, uh, programming language, uh, procedural language used as a native procedural language of PostgreSQL. Take a look at the same algorithm, same example, coded in PLPG SQL. It is not that perfect as my dream, though it's far better than PHP, isn't it? I do not care about low-level result representation since select is the natural part of the, nat uh, is the native part of the programming language. Thus, Thus, I have made the PHP layer quite thin already, and I want to get rid of it completely for two reasons. Native selects is better than PHP interface to a database, and a shorter processing is always better than a longer one. I thought it is pretty obvious that a shorter processing is always better than a longer one. Take a look at the current layout. The only user of database is PHP. And PHP behavior is determined by the finite set of arguments, and it returns simply text. And at the same time, 
database is quite able to perform imperative routines. Then, why not to codify the same algorithm inside a database in PLPGSQL? There is nothing unique in PHP as, an, uh, as a language. Uh, n absolutely nothing special. Uh, uh, there is no special features. We do not need a special standalone process simply to calculate web page appearance. Still, the connection between database and web server looks like a problem, but it is not a problem indeed. Nginx is able to talk PQ protocol. The solution is the special Nginx PostgreSQL module written by Piotr Sikora. It allows us to connect Nginx directly to database like this. And while my beloved Nginx already allows us to easily define where to get a reply text from, it is not a bit harder to ask Nginx to use a database query result as a reply text to send back to a client. Here we define a connection to the PostgreSQL, and it is also a permanent connection, which is a great improvement. It's a performance, it's a good performance issue. <laughs> and in the location section of Nginx config file, we specify what query to send and how to treat a result. This option text means uh, that query result should be, all the fields should be dumped plainly, separate with line feed character. Apparently, this text could be a valid HTML. It makes a request processing at least one third shorter. We get rid of this parasite gear. So we have the following layout where almost everything is under control of database. And this layout causes two frequently asked questions. What about model view controller and what about object oriented programming? What about model view controller? Let's compare my layout against MVC layout. While my layout is quite structured, there are already uh, views and controllers and model. It is not that ugly monster as MVC is, because the data model is sole, unlike two duplicate data models in MVC. And apparently, this duplication is a burden for a programmer in development time. And it is a burden for a computer in runtime. And it is a great source of bugs. Views are rather integral with model. You may consider it a disadvantage, but in, from my point of view, it reflects the natural dependency of a display on a model. So I consider it small advantage. And finally, controllers in my layout are far more able to perform any access control. If you implement access control outside the database, you abuse this link in the first place, and you make the whole access control system easy to bypass. And as you spend resources to 
uh, elaborate your own subsystem, you left the powerful, ready-to-use tool completely unused. It's a scene of waste power. So my layout is more natural than MVC and seams between M, V and C do not bleed. Let me illustrate some of these bleeding seams. Take a look at the first example. It's uh, part of the code of somewhat popular average-sized website. It selects all fields, asterisk. It's a pseudocode. These examples are written in pseudocode just to, to be easily readable. Yeah? It selects all fields and populate array with them and then immediately drop them all except one. Almost the same stupid job does the second example. It also selects all, it also populates array, and it also drops them all mm, simply by using, by this comparison. What? Plus some extra fun with ternary operator, question mark operator. Take a look at the second and at the third arguments. Isn't there fun? It's real fun. And these examples are not the examples of the worst practice. It is mainstream example. The author of this code is now a chief software developer of a, say, middle-sized, average-sized European software company. The man who wrote this field is now teaching other programmers to program. So these are the very mainstream examples and very respected mainstream. The, second, the third example is the most object or oh, <laughs> about object oriented programming. Take a note. The second example is more object oriented because it's trying to hide its stupidity behind a method call. while the third example is most object-oriented of them because it is, uh, since it is looking pretty good, it loads some objects and then loop through them and there is nothing wrong. Wrong things are hidden exactly as object-oriented programming demands. Behold, first method selects several records from a table there is nothing wrong. The second function, uh, update, exactly the, say, uh, exactly the one record from the same table. And there is still nothing wrong. But in combination, look for each. Do you see for each? In combination, they produce imperative cycle of updates. Shock and horror. Raise your hand who do not feel a horror. Oh, even uh, unexpected for me. <laughs> Do you see the method, uh, the way they manage to produce hundreds of SQL queries per web page? Do you still wonder why popular s websites are running so slow, are being constantly refactoring, and crying for scalability solutions. Have you seen the reason? Why do they always complain about the SQL low efficiency? And why the rumors about mysterious no SQL so popular nowadays? The database misuse influenced by MVC plus OOP ideas.
And I suspect the reason why this bad thing had happened. While generally a needless job is an essence of object-oriented programming, there are also another issue. I call it representation collision. Since database provides you the highest possible abstraction level, if you try to re-represent your data in terms of object-oriented classes, you dramatically lower the abstraction level. This is the key. And when these two representations collide, a programmer is trying to break the self-sufficient working thing into small pieces suitable for his ugly low-level instruments. This particular kind of unnecessary labor is like a diagnostic surgery on a healthy patient. So I insist the database provides you the highest possible abstraction level. And you may use it, you may consider it a generalization of all my reasons to use database as much as possible. What about object-oriented programming uh, aside of model view controller? Besides the fact that object-oriented programming is pure evil and should be thrown away, besides the issue mentioned above, there are simply no room for object-oriented programming in a website. Take a look at the next example. It's scripted in PHP. It's not a pseudocode, it's pure PHP. This example is intended to define a single cookie. It took four lines of code with object-oriented programming. And the same algorithm is merely a single call without object-oriented programming. And again, it is a very mainstream example it is the official example of YII framework. And as you clearly see, the useful information shown in yellow on this slide are far more concentrated without object-oriented programming. It shows us that OOP is very good for code bloat. And it is possibly it's probably the reason why OOP is so popular. Because of the many companies' paper line of code. I can't characterize object-oriented programming as exact as one object-oriented apologetic said. I see no reason to complain, silly, he said. Just write a wrapper function, just like any able programmer does. If you can't, you are just stupid. This is the very characteristic of object-oriented programming. Everyone writes wrappers, me included. Well, we have a system looks like this. And back to database again. Almost everything is under control of a database. And it is quite structured, as I promised. <laughs> Yet there, are, there is a thing to improve. The views, uh, the least sophisticated and the most independent module. If you need a, say, uh, template engine or such, there is no real obstacle to elaborate one inside a database. You have a procedural language to do it, and you have a data model to access it directly. So feel free to improve the views this way, but it is not my way. I hate the fact that my server had to run so dull routine to calculate web page appearance so numerous times while thousands of client machines stay completely cool. I hate the fact that a client 
had to wait for my server to calculate web page appearance, while a typical client machine is times more powerful than my server nowadays. And I hate to flood network with HTML pages repeatedly. HTML pages usually contain too few useful information, badly diluted with meaningless decorations. Fortunately, the Ajax was developed. It allows me to delegate the dullest, delegate the dullest routine to the client machine, to a browser, and to save tons of traffic by transferring data only. Uh, my server, in the first place, hand over to a client the entire set of HTML templates and JavaScript code uh, of uh, display functions. So we hand, um, we hand over to a client all the templates and all the display functions, all decorations, the entire graphic user interface. And the server and my server replies to subsequent calls in brief and lightning fast manner, repeatedly, transferring data only. Language of, of the replies is JavaScript. It is just convenient for me to simply call eval function against the reply text. And illustrious one function framework is located at this URL. Take a look at it. It simplifies Ajax usage to the limit. You, you would like it. <laughs> and yes, everyone writes wrappers, me included. It's just a wrapper. So finally, we have a system looks like this, where Nginx plays its invisible role perfectly, parsing arguments, cookies, checking captures, dispatching localizations, filtering input. This is mm, uh, these tasks are done by Nginx. And where database is used properly at last. And Nginx with PostgreSQL plays the duet. Now you may ask me questions if you have any. And then we may proceed to a lesser subtopic. I have prepared uh, several subtopics for you to choose. Would you like to know what subtopics or ask questions? I have a question. Um, okay, so how are you going to do a search engine optimization if all of your um, pages are made by JavaScript? In the last example, in this particular system, all the pages are made of JavaScript and they are not possible to display without it. It's a disadvantage, I admit it, but nevertheless, it simplifies my system. Am I, uh, the, is it the answer? No? <laughs> Please ask me uh, once again. So how are you going to, going to SEO with uh, a JavaScript client? Of what? A um, it's just you, you assume that your client uh, will run all your JavaScript correctly. And when a crawler uh, comes across your site, it's not going to, to run uh, all of it, uh, or, or maybe just a part of it, and then just will just fail to index uh, all, all of your 
uh, of your pages. Okay. I hope I understood. Yes, there is a problem. Uh, different uh, JavaScript in different browsers. And yes, I assume this problem would be solved sooner or later. But if you dislike, so if you dislike this design, you may not use it and stop at this stage. Version management. It's a good question. <laughs> you, you, you can put your uh, schema inside a Git repository? A look. A look. Uh, the source code of every system is merely a text. So I already have a possibility to use CVS. That's all. But, but there is details, details, details. Wow. There is a difficulties. Uh, but if you say the picture is quite expensive, quite illustrious. Look, if you create a init script for a database and then you apply this script to a database and then on the running instance you want to modify the database, modify the running, data, running instance of database. You cannot apply, you cannot just modify your init script and apply it to a running database. You need to elaborate another, another script that uh, would alter database and apply it to a database. So if you want to keep, keep your initial source code of a database, you have to, you have to keep init script and uh, alter script both so you have to perform double labor. It is a problem and I use the following solution. The solution is APG diff program which produce this alter script from two database dumps. It calculates difference I, I, APG diff calculate difference between two SQL scripts, two init scripts, produce alter scripts. So uh, I, it is not my labor. I labor only. Uh, I work only with init scripts, and then if to apply this alter script to the old database, database change its state and. Uh, the database identical to would be prod okay forget do you understand what i'm talking about apg diff is is my tool i'm using in platscart.com and there is a, a full a big picture how i use apg diff in application to platscart.com uh, there are lots of user database in, in platscart.com and sometimes we need to update them, alter them. So I keep the initial init script for a user database and I modify only the, one fi uh, the single file. Uh, Apparently, I keep, I maintain two testable database named try one, try zero and try one. Uh, to test my 
uh, modifications, I drop and recreate, drop and create try zero database and test how it works with the website. And then I calculate, I calculate difference. Oh, sorry. Try zero is my working database. It reflects my recent, uh, my recent changes. While try one is identical to it to a user database. So I do scheme dumps from try zero and try one and compare them with apg diff. So diff, diff script is produced. I apply it to try one. The, after after this uh, after this operation, try one is identical to try zero. Then I test if it works properly with the website, and if it works properly, the same diff script I apply to uh, every user database. And this is what about difficulties? So, so why I what? why I told it, why I told that. Due to, due to APG div procedure, I have the single init script, a mere text to work with. So since then, I can use a usual version control system. But that means if you, uh, if you add uh uh, a new field to a table and the table already has data in it sure uh, then uh, then the, the value of that new field will all be null because there is no way to provide a yeah or, or you can have another default but it must be a fixed default sure and you can't do it uh, uh, calculate the value for a new field from uh, uh, from old fields. This particular problem needs particular uh, solutions for each particular case. It, it has no general solution at all. That's my answer. Uh, you cannot get rid of manual work, generally. I, if, if we can, uh, we are all not needed. <laughs> no, uh, in, in Postgres uh, as well, um, the data definition uh, language is transactional. So you can do an alt table and then you can insert uh, a lot of it. Yes. In, one in PostgreSQL, a data definition language is transactional nowadays, but the problem is not uh, related to transactions. The problem is that you cannot apply your initial script to the running instance. If you have a, if you have a tables defined, you need to produce completely different script to change them. Reply, please. The, the only difference between the old one and new one is that the new one has a new uh, core procedure which does uh, the transaction to add, uh, add in a new column. Sorry, I can't get your point. Uh, you're saying you, 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 can't, you can't in, 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 in uh, um, you're saying uh, when, when you already have existing data. Yeah, uh, and you and you need to, uh, to add a column. Yes, um, and you and it needs to have data. And then you can't uh, create a diff script for uh, all the different database in advance. Look, man, uh, if I have to, I if I need to have data, I should obtain it data first from someone. If I have no data, then I should not try to add this column. I presume. Yeah, sure, but if you can calculate it, then the only difference would be that one of them has the extra procedure to do it. Um, it's a matter of uh, uh, maintenance scripts. I have enough set 
um, enough and even redundant set of maintenance scripts that allows me to apply uh, apply my modifications to the entire set of database in platscart.com easily. I, I, I can get your point. What is the problem? Uh, we're talking uh, abstract matters. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, to help that guy, trying to figure out how to uh, add a column into an into existing database. That was all. Why adding a column uh, looks like a problem for you? No, it doesn't. It shouldn't. I just that guy asked it. I think it is not a problem at all. Should we proceed with this subtopic? I have something to tell about APG diff. Uh, the existence of APG diff itself shows us the algorithmic nature of calculating differences between database schemes. Look, uh, in SQL, generally, we specify, programmer specifies what he wants to get. And he does not care about how to achieve the result. On the contrary, in data definition language, programmer have to specify how to get a result. And a system do not care about the result itself, if it is satisfied if it is the result that a programmer wants to get. This is the problem. Uh, quite different abstraction layers of uh, data manipulation language and data definition language. In data manipulation language, system takes care about the way how to achieve the result. And it takes care about a result. In data definition language, this pretty algorithmical, as APG diff clearly shows us, pretty algorithmical labor is delegated to a programmer. So programmer is unjustly forced to perform a computer labor. This is. The reason I complain about data definition language, and I think even that we need completely different, another data definition language, uh, allows us to specify what result we want to get and let the system to calculate how to achieve this result. Questions? So if you have no questions, and if you dislike to listen to another subtopics, oh, five minutes to one o'clock. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your questions. That's all.